Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, let's talk about a combination of things. Um, this may be a lengthy video, my apologies, but I am here to discuss where I'm at with the lower level high frequency trading. So over the last few days, I've talked about Monet, DB, free BSD for potential uses in a high frequency trading environment. Well, I am here to confirm at least one of those two, but what I wanted to do was to highlight this posting and specifically this video here uh, on Mono DB X100 very fast column store. So this person here from Netherlands went through uh, their entire algorithm, how they do it, how they are able to use uh, level two cash uh, instead of the CPU to process quite quickly um, column store databases and get uh, fast processing with that. Now this video is from 2009 so it is quite old but uh, this did evolve into uh, Ingress DB uh, a few years ago so I really can't comment on where uh, this is and how it will stack up against um, other, uh, namely, uh, no other NoSQL databases like the ones that I'm uh, obviously investigating and using, like MongoDB or uh, the other one, of, uh, also known as Redis. So there's a variety of um, research papers that you can look at to show you how to do it. The problem is, as it says here, the code will not be released. Came from one of these uh, articles here. And um, there's some wiki info. Uh, there is somewhere in one of these a, a mention of an open source alternative, but for whatever reason, that code does not exist either. So this may be um, an, an interesting idea but I would watch this video just to highlight some of the techniques used that you could use to shave off a lot of your uh, computer processing uh, in terms of how you handle algorithms and how you handle uh, some really interesting data uh, design patterns. This, this guy's quite quite smart. Okay, so uh, moving on. Um, for now, I will assume that NoSQL is the path. Um, just so everybody knows that may not know about MonetDB, um, this came from, uh, if you're not familiar with KDB+, Plus, which is a very, very expensive um, a database that's used primarily for time series analysis and housing. Also has some trading execution built into it. It's a very expensive database used throughout many enterprises like banks. Originally came out of Morgan Stanley, actually. And uh, this uh, database did come up as an alternative uh, open source solution because it's column store, which led me to this video of the Monet DB and X100 combination. That's for the data. Now, this video here, is, or this posting is really important. This brings you up to speed of where things are at. So let me do some history here. Uh, Erlang, just so everybody knows, Erlang is very, very important, which uh, is a language that came out of old switches put out by Ericsson many years ago. So they wrote this proprietary language uh, that was housed within these uh, heavy-duty phone switches, and uh, eventually the language was abandoned, but then eventually also got open-sourced. And oddly enough, um, some of the high-frequency trading shops, namely banks, have used this for their infrastructure when it comes to service servers uh, and processes so that they can communicate with each other. Uh, not only that, but um, these are big banks we're talking about. So one of the banks that uh, uses it is um, Goldman Sachs, which uses it in their High frequency trading environment. You can just go to the, one of these Wikipedia uh, articles to get confirmation of that. But what gets really interesting with this Erlang discussion is um, the person by the name of Richard Croucher, hope I got his last name right, uh, who runs this uh, informatics uh, solutions.com. Um, 
but he's also the VP of AVP at uh, Barclays. Now, the amazing thing about some of these videos is he, he I don't know if you could say he openly talks about um, high frequency trading uh, and how Barclays is doing it, but his background is very, very, very impressive. Originally, I think came out of the Sundays, moved to Microsoft. Uh, he, he is a platform architect, so he knows his stuff inside out. No questions asked, and he's a big believer in Erlang. So that tells me, obviously, uh, Berkeley's is probably another Erlang user as well. So up here, I put in some uh, videos, or sorry, postings that you can refer to, uh, and uh, uh, I'll just go through those for a bit. Here in this particular video is really, really revealing. There's a video here put out by uh, that Richard guy. So you can see the title of the Continue Evolution of High Frequency Trading Systems. In here, uh, this came out, mm, when's the date? Well, I discovered it, end of uh, uh, 2014. But you can see here there's other videos um, on this. And uh, I put it together some notes on this. And basically, uh, we are talking about what kind of C++ libraries to use, how to uh, reduce Linux jitter to get lowest latency. Uh, one thing was do not use Java for its garbage collector. Um, some stats where C++ 70% used in HFT software. 25% is used in Java, but because of heavy garbage collection, um, turns you gotta, there, there's a lot of investment put into trying to tweak those uh, JVMs. And then also there's another 5% for um, function programming. Another stat you should know about is all high frequency trading systems are deployed on Linux environments. In my case, I'm talking about uh, BSD. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, there's also uh, talk on Boost, um, but never talks about Simulink, uh, but that doesn't matter. Some other talks as well, as I said, Linux Jitter, um, some libraries were talked about, Quantlib was one, Boost Math, Toolkit, uh, some PDFs that he's got be put together, you can get them here at the Code Mesh, How to Get Lowest Latency 101, TCB IP Bypass, which is very important. That's why I'm saying BSD. If you have not uh, been tracking my free BSD articles, uh, that is definitely, you should check out the BSD versus Linux argument where uh, free BSD enables you, when you install it and configure it, you can remove and just stick with a base bare metal uh, install and remove the TCP, TCP IP entirely. There's also talk of raw Ethernet uh, network programming, um, some onload. Now here's the other one, RDMA uh, is very important due to the fact of uh, this is where it enables you can use uh, in Linux remote direct memory access to move blocks of memory from one uh, process to another. So I can't remember the exact uh, performance, but if it was something like one or two gigs per second, this is something definitely, definitely look into. We'll talk about that. And, and, um, actually, I put up an article on this uh, about Python using RDMA. Um, it is a specific package for using RDMA. The question is, is it as performant as, let's say, Erlang? We, I don't know. I have to talk to some people and get their opinion. Uh, also, Intel C compiler, how to optimize it. Uh, I think the, this may be used as a standard C compiler. Also talking about uh, Xeon tuning for the processor. Uh, also, big page um, optimization. Again, RDMA, I've already talked about. GPU acceleration uh, with NVIDIA. Uh, some assistance in the CUDA and some other th third-party accelerate and then the FPGA debate. 
Oh boy, I mean, this is just the history of it, and there's more and more and more. Um, but I don't want to get into it, but you will find all this information on my site. Then there's also Erlang specifically, as I said. Uh, we talked about using Erlang at Barclays, using P uh, RDMA, um, and he's got another video on this as well from Richard Croucher. And again, you got to remember uh, Goldman Sachs is also using it in their environment for high frequency trading. So there is this mention here of this library, Mr. Static Void RDMA. Um, okay, so let's talk about our current uh, posting I just put up. Okay, so we've gone through the history of everything about a year ago. We've talked about the Erlang with RDMA. Um, but there's now an update for last year using Erlang in the cloud, but there's this presentation also at the bottom of this. You'll find a video from Richard Croucher about how Erlang has its limit. Um, this is not really specific to high frequency trading, but it's interesting because although apps like WhatsApp use Erlang and how they have over 3,000 servers, Based on his experience, he finds that usually from watching this video, I gathered there's probably a point where Erlang can no longer scale at about 1,000 uh, servers. And as a result, he's trying to push another uh, framework to be built on top of this Erlang OTP to enable the reliability to be still uh, part of the uh, solution, but also enable a way now for other servers to talk to each other that go beyond that thousand potential limit where things start to break in order to alleviate the scalability. So that's the big, big, I guess, disadvantage at this current time with Erlang. Um, even though with high frequency trading, I, I highly doubt we'll ever go beyond a thousand servers, but it's something to consider, um, especially in the world of what he calls and pretty well is getting trendy now. The Internet of Things because it's now going to push um, something like 20 billion users uh, from different devices uh, onto other devices so the volumes are pretty high okay so we've got that talked about Erlang in uh, Erlang uh, within a cloud environment I guess We've talked about Goldman Sachs using Erlang. Now, he's got a video here, uh, Richard Croucher, and he's saying, and this is very true when it comes to Erlang versus other languages like C++, Java, or C Sharp, getting increasingly difficult to utilize these conventional programming languages. Threading in the mutex soon become a nightmare to code and debug. We're finding that the concurrency of Erlang is a good fit for cloud and we now use this by choice that you can get here in the PDF. Also, I came across, I guess call it luckily, another set of resources for high performance in a high frequency trading environment. So there's a variety of other links here uh, and suggestions to look at. I haven't really looked at these yet, but you'll see that they're always talking about CPU optimization and then there, this is a pretty good resource I find with CPPCon, Herb Sutter, all these people that talk about um, tweaking and, and, and optimizing C++. And I guess I haven't really looked at any of these as well uh, for CPU memory usage and concurrency and that sort of thing. OS, I have not looked at any of these. Um, the Linux, but again, this comes back to, and we'll talk about this in a bit, the debate of using Linux versus FreeBSD, which is more of a Unix compliant operating system versus a Linux. And I'll talk, I'll, I'll give you a really good resource in that. But I'm really at the point now where I don't really have any further interest in using Linux. Uh, I'm more interested in deploying onto FreeBSD. Then we get into the more exciting stuff the low latency trading with high frequency trading. Um, LMAX Disruptor, that's done in Java. I think that's kind of dated. Again, the evolution of HFT from uh, Richard Croucher, which is mentioned. 
And then we get into some other Linux performance stuff. Okay. Knowing all that, that's all fine and good. Now, let's say you do decide to go with FreeBSD, which I think if you are going to go uh, this route for deployment as an option, uh, you would be better off to use some of the recommended um, libraries here for network performance. Uh, there's this one, net user, user land based IP stack. And then this one, net map is current, commonly used in HFT as well as packet filtering applications. Um, and where all this comes from is this really, really important uh, Y Combinator uh, listing. And in here is a lot of good stuff. Talks about a little bit of HFT. I've already mentioned it already. Um, but the interesting argument with FreeBSD is this is where you'll really understand the importance of using FreeBSD over uh, uh, standard Linux. One of the interesting highlights for me was um, Facebook. Uh, this posting here where it was said, Facebook made the rounds last year of a job posting that stayed the goal for for the Linux kernel network stack to rival or exceed FreeBSD. So essentially, what Facebook's trying to do, and this was uh, just over a year ago, where Facebook's really trying to um, create their own Linux kernel, Linux kernel, uh, with a network stack that will exceed the performance of FreeBSD. So that tells you out of the box that FreeBSD is probably a good uh, one to go with as an operating system. Then there's a mention of NetMap as well, which is um, first developed for free FreeBSD, um, and on and on it goes. So you can go through that in your own time and figure all that out. Okay, um, so out of that came some other libraries. Uh, there's this talk of this user space networking. And when you go through a lot of these, these always point back to Intel. People don't know this, but Intel's got a pretty good software um, API set of documents and section where you can go through all these different libraries, see which one fits for you. The one that uh, was pop most popular was, okay, so this is what we're talking about here. User space network stacks forked or ported. This one looks to be the most popular one, this libuinet uh, user space port of the free BSD uh, TCPI stack. So there's this as an open source alternative. There was this one as well mentioned uh, news, I guess. Um, but again, it's using the Linux kernel. So uh, very useful uh, topics here to go through. These people that I've listed here have, have made some very valid points on the Linux versus uh, FreeBSD debate. Um, also, as I mentioned, the NU, NU's library. But here's an interesting article if you do decide to go with something like a net map. This person has spent some time trying to showcase some of the C++ examples on how to get net map working. It's pretty technical. Uh, I think it will be a challenge to work with. And lastly, there's this other one that's mentioned in this Y Combinator um, article called D. P, uh, sorry, DPDK, and again, that refers back to uh, Intel. So, lots of interesting stuff here to go through. Um, some of the stuff coming out of Intel is free, um, but I would definitely, from my perspective, probably stay with FreeBSD. Um, right now, MonoDB, I don't think you'll go very far with it from what I'm researching further. But some of these topics are very, very interesting. Erlang is a good one. And um, trying to figure out some of the RDMA techniques because in all of uh, 
this uh, person, Richard Croucher's videos, always p comes back to RDMA, RDMA, and this most recent one shows the statistics that you'll get with RDMA versus standard TCP IP. So it's definitely something I want to pursue on a free FBSD environment. So I thought I'd just put this video together and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.